Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and it's time for some more KSP math. In the last episode, I talked about the Oberth effect. Specifically, why is it that prograde and retrograde burns are most efficient when performed close to the parent body when you are moving quickly? Today, I want to talk about why the opposite is true for normal and radial burns. They are the most efficient when you are far away from the parent body, when you are moving more slowly. Also this episode, I want to develop a formula to calculate the delta V requirements for a change in inclination. So, let's do the math. Let's get started by making sure everyone knows what I mean when I refer to the normal and radial direction. When not under thrust or experiencing atmospheric drag, an object's motion through space at any particular moment is always tangential to its trajectory around the parent body. This is true whether you are in orbit, in which case the trajectory is an ellipse, or not, in which case the trajectory is a hyperbola. In either case, this direction of motion is called the prograde direction, while the opposite direction is called retrograde. Thanks to the mathematics of ellipses and hyperbolas, the direction towards the parent body is always perpendicular, that is 90 degrees, to the prograde retrograde direction. This is the radial direction, with the direction towards the planet usually referred to as radially in, and the direction away radially out. The direction perpendicular to both the prograde and radial directions is the normal direction. The positive normal direction is determined by applying the right hand rule to the prograde and radially in directions. The negative normal direction is usually called antinormal. Normal and radial burns have a fundamentally different function than prograde and retrograde burns. The primary purpose of a prograde or retrograde burn is to change the amount of energy in the orbit, which in turn changes altitude. Normal and radial burns are about changing the direction of your path through space. Specifically, with a normal burn you are interested in changing the plane of your trajectory, that is, your inclination while radial burns twist your orbit, changing the positions of the periapsis and apoapsis. Since normal and radial burns aren't about changing the energy in the orbit, the kinetic energy formula we talked about last episode doesn't enter into the discussion. Instead, we need to talk about vectors. Let's say we have a current orbital speed of 2000 meters per second, and would like to change our, the direction of our trajectory by 30 degrees without changing our current speed. Note, you can consider this a change in either the radial or the normal direction and won't affect the calculations. Notice that the burn we need to add is not perpendicular to our prograde vector at all, but is a little bit retrograde as well. You've likely noticed this when making plane changes in your game. If the plane change is small, it's hardly noticeable, but when making big plane changes, you have to add a substantial amount of retrograde to maintain the altitude and shape of your orbit. To calculate the delta V necessary for this burn, we need to use the law of cosines. Substituting in and getting out our calculator gets us a burn of about 1035 meters per second. This calculation is pretty easy to turn into a formula. Let's let V represent the orbital velocity and theta be the angle that we want to change our trajectory by. Substituting in and some quick simplifying gets this. An easy mistake to make here is to subtract the two 2v two squareds, but that gets us zero, which is clearly wrong. That second 2v two squared is part of the cosine theta term and thus can't be subtracted. What we can do though is take the 2v two squared out as a common factor and then take the square root. We can make this look a smidge better by taking the square root of the v squared and removing it from the square root. Okay, with that done, let's take a look at what the cost of the same trajectory change would be if our orbital velocity was, say, 500 meters per second, a quarter of our previous velocity. Substituting in and pushing through a calculator now gets 259 meters per second, a quarter of our previous delta V. Indeed, this is a linear relationship. Whatever fraction your orbital velocity is reduced by, that's the fraction you'll save in the delta V cost. Let's look at a more concrete example. Say you're in a circular orbit about the moon at an altitude of 20 kilometers and need to make a 90 degree inclination change. What is the cost? First, we need to work out our velocity. This is given by this formula, which we have seen a few times before. R is the orbital radius from the center of the moon. 
As the moon has a radius of 200 kilometers, R is 220,000 meters, while mu is the standard gravitational parameter for the moon. Substituting in gets an orbital velocity of 544 meters per second. We now substitute that, along with the 90 degrees, into our trajectory change formula to get a delta V cost of 769 meters per second. However, there is a cheaper way to get what we want. We know that reducing our orbital velocity reduces the cost of an inclination change. To reduce our velocity, we'll raise our apoapsis to 1500 kilometers. By the Visviva equation, this will cost 180 meters per second. Next, we need to work out our orbital velocity at apoapsis. We know our velocity at periapsis would be 444 meters per second plus the 180 meters per second of the burn, getting 724 meters per second. To get the orbital velocity at another point, we need another formula that we have seen a couple of times before. R1 times V1 is equal to R2 times V2. This formula relates the orbital radii and velocities of any two points in an orbit. We'll let R1 and V1 be the radius and velocity at periapsis and R2 be the radius at apoapsis. Substituting in and a little rearranging gets a velocity of apoapsis of 94 meters per second. Armed with this, we can now calculate the cost of the 90 degree inclination change. Substituting in and calculating gets only 133 meters per second. We can now perform a third burn at periapsis to bring us back down to our 20 kilometer circular orbit, costing another 180 meters per second. Adding this all up gets 493 meters per second, which is 36% cheaper than performing the inclination change directly in low orbit. Of course, if we are coming into the moon needing to make an inclination change to get our desired orbit, we would never bring our apoapsis down in the first place. Instead, we would leave it high after our capture, perform the necessary inclination change, and then afterwards bring the apoapsis down to the desired altitude. I hope that you have found this video useful and that it will help you make decisions as to where to perform your maneuvers to maximize the efficiency of your missions. I thank you for watching and I hope to see you again next time.